equal value. Um, we want you all to explore your theses three-dimensionally, so we'll also be looking at the work of artists. Um, this is the project by Robert Irwin, and he uses this translucent screen to draw a fine line between what space is and what space isn't, and the material and the immaterial. Again, here with these prisms, he's experimenting with our perception of solid and void. And then this project by Rachel White Reed, the untitled House from 1930, 1993. Um, she was casting the interior volumes of a condemned terraced house, and it set, sat like a ghost within the landscape. So um, our trip, well, our second trip, it will be to Transylvania, specifically to cluj napoca which is in the center of Romania. And this will be a trip to serve as inspiration for our haunted architectures and landscapes. Um, there we're going to visit Banfi Castle, which was built in 1543 by the Banfi family and was subsequently used as a military hospital by the Nazis and it's thought to be haunted by the family as well as patients from the hospital. We're also going to visit the Hoya Forest, which is thought to be the most concentrated area of paranormal activity in the world. It's called the Onland Bermuda Triangle and just researching it, I'm a bit freaked out, but um, <laughs> it's, it's got like a weird central circular clearing that's supposed to be protected by ghosts, and that white circle is supposedly around a UFO, but all to be determined by you when you visit. Um, we're also going to visit these incredible painted interiors of a series of wooden churches inside the Ethnographic <coughs> Museum of Transylvania, as well as take a journey to the Salina Turda, which is a reused kind of salt mine structure where we can actually traverse these amazing salt balconies in the Iosif mine and travel to this theme park in the middle of a kind of saturated salt island in a salt lake at the bottom of the Terezia mine. So this is a rough idea of the trip cost. Again, it's all inclusive and we think we can get it a bit lower, but it includes accommodation travel and the price of all the visits. Um, I think most of the quotes we've been getting back from travel agents are around 330. So we think we can get this down a bit more. Um, we just want to show some work from last year, examples of projects that are not necessarily, um, did necessarily develop as buildings, um, but are architectural. Um, all developed as projects that took positions on time and change, fact and fiction, and objects in relation to landscape. So this was a project by Chris, um, which was the Museum of Uncollectibles, and he set out to design architectural constructs that would preserve the voids um, that were emerging in the Lower East Side in Manhattan and the project trod a line between um, development, regeneration and what, what constitutes heritage and this was beautifully presented as a pilgrimage set within a, within a box. And Cap, who took as her site Grand Central Station and um, she was interested in the the idea of the pause, the waiting for the train, and then extended this to grow a timetable and a timeline for the site, which imagined an extended, um, an extended persistence of this site, so that its change and dec decay would be excreted as a landscape that grew in the station over seconds, minutes, hours, years. And she did some great model making and she actually manufactured clouds, which were models that just existed fleeting in time and space, which was really appropriate to the project. And then in terms of visualizing the invisible, Dave's project last year um, ma manifested the intangible forces that play in the shaping of a city. So he uncovered the scandal whereby this weird arbitrary census tract connected um, East Holland to Central Park South, meaning that <coughs> government officials were allowed to siphon funds meant for East Harlem and use them to fund a luxury tower on Central Park South. Um, so his architecture wanted to manifest the, the wrongness of this. And in the style of the Bungalow Germania project that Danielle spoke about at the beginning of the presentation, he tried to take a floor plan of East Harlem and merge it with that of a luxury tower, which rendered the interior of this building totally uninhabitable. Um, another project is by Anifab Decker that constructed a museum of facts and fiction. Um, what he did was he took a series of unbuilt projects for his site, which was in Marine Park on the outskirts of Manhattan, because in his mind, fiction is anything that isn't built. And, um, and so this was a stadium project that was proposed for that, and um, he dissected that into its constituent elements and created a kind of overall taxonomy for the area, and then recombined that with factual elements that he found on site to create a kind of hybrid between fact and fiction, and he made the kind of fictional or the unbuilt fact. 
And so we were really excited about this project because it was one of two projects to be nominated for the silver medal by Brooks this year, so we're crossing our fingers that that comes through. And then to move quickly from that to studio culture, um, that's really important to the running of DS7. Um, we meet most Tuesdays in the studio and we're very excited by the sheet that Charles just gave us, which hopefully means that we have permanent studio space this year. Um, we often do tutorials in groups. I think it's, we think it's really important that you know, you're all familiar with each other's projects and we develop a kind of group discussion about the unit agenda. Um, and then we'll, we'll start as bigger groups and kind of move to smaller groups. Um, last year we used the blog heavily. Um, it's already set up with this year's brief. And I think if we meet every Tuesday, the Friday blog posts are really helpful to get an additional amount of feedback, mainly from your peers rather than just from us, to generate a kind of unit discussion but also to use the blog as a way to develop a library of references, inspirations, and ideas that will push the studio forward. Um, so as Manje said, oh well, this is the group last year, and um, studio culture is very important, and we had a, a good year last year with everyone um, counselling one another and really taking on board and getting to know one another's uh, projects and working collectively in that way yet also developing one's own thesis, one's own ideas, uh, which we really positively encourage, um, rather than the subscribing to a studio aesthetic or a prescribed agenda. And so just a little a bit about us. Um, I'm Danielle, I'm an artist and architectural historian. Um, I've worked in practice as a researcher, and I teach at London Met um, History and Theory in both art and architecture and we met at the AA where I um, ran the night school program. So I'm Manije, I, in addition to DS7, I'm the head of lectures and I run the public program at the Architectural Association. Um, I studied at the AA, I used to teach a design studio there for three years before I came to Brooks. And um, I've worked for architectural practices at Foster and Partners and John Pawson, and I've worked for a lot of design publications as well. And um, I'm kind of really interested in the formats through which architecture is expressed in my own work. So just a quick uh, run through of the experts we'll be working with this year. Um, first of all, Ed Blake, who works for Doug and Morris. He's going to be our technical tutor. And um, we've displayed him here as like a top trump card. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'll be running a lot of surveying workshops about the techniques we talked about while we're in Dungeness. Um, we'll also be bringing in Tom Spillans, who is an expert in 3D scanning and image capture. He used to work for ScanLab and is now based in Copenhagen. And he'll be helping us kind of translate objects from the real world into the digital and understand them more. We hope to visit um, Nord and Simon Condor, who are um, offices that have worked at Dungeness and can talk about working with the kind of specific constraints and fragilities. Um, we'll also be attending a lecture by Rotor, who are a Belgian collective that work with appropriation and reuse and extracting materials from buildings. So we're really excited about the year and um, if you have any questions just come and chat to us after the presentations. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll be directly on to DSA.